Aloha, you're listening to Chad Ford's NBA Big Board on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today we talk future talent rankings, the top 20 NBA teams with the best collection of players under the age of 25. Here we go. Aloha, I'm Chad Ford. You're listening to Chad Ford's NBA Big Board on Locked On Podcast Network. And today we are going to have a fun podcast talking about the best talent under the age of 25 team by team. And so we're going to look at which teams have done the best job collecting that core of young talent that can ultimately lead to either that team growing together and becoming an NBA championship contender, or perhaps they use that young talent as trade bait uh, to land a superstar. And again, we're not talking about the best teams in the NBA. That's what our power rankings were for. And you can listen to a podcast just a couple of weeks ago that I had with Mark Stein talking about that. Nor are we talking about which teams are the most likely to be the worst teams in the league and maybe win all the lottery balls uh, on, on, on the NBA draft lottery night as well. I actually have a column on that as well over at NBABigBoard.com. You can check that out as well if you want to know which teams have the best shot of winning the lottery this year. This is not about how a team is going to perform on the court. It's about how they've been building their team, how they've been thinking about using the draft or trades to build a core of young players under the age of 25 that can ultimately lead to NBA success. And so I've been talking to a number of NBA general managers. Uh, First of all, that's the first thing I did, and and some NBA scouts to get their take on which of these teams they thought had the best talent. actually asked them to rank players based off of tiers. So tier one being a superstar, all the way down to tier five being a, a deep rotation player. Then I consulted two different analytical models as well. Uh, Darko, if you're doing a Chad Ford podcast or a Chad Ford column, uh, you for sure would love a statistical uh, measure called Darko. And then another one called LeBron, which are very highly respected as two analytics models that look at what a player overall is doing, both on the offensive and defensive end. And then for rookies, because rookies are really, really hard to gauge because they actually haven't played yet in the NBA, I went with our 2021 NBA draft tier system, which I did on a podcast before the NBA draft, looked at those tier ratings. And so, for example, a guy like Kate Cunningham, who graded out as a tier one, would get a tier one designation here, um, except I downgrade those designations a little bit because, as we know, rookies just aren't going to be able to really contribute in the first year or two in a, in a really high level, just despite them being extremely talented. And so the idea here is which of these players under the age of 25 before opening night on October 19th are going to have the best NBA career. So we're not just looking at what they will do this year, but over a five-year period, what they're going to be like in three to five years, and then putting them into a tier system and then rating, right, or adding up those numbers and then looking at which teams are coming out with the best overall core of young talent under the age of 25. If they have players over the age of 25, they were not counted uh, in in this section. So, you know, you can look at it and say, hey, the, the, the Warriors have Steph Curry. Uh, why aren't they rated higher? I'm not counting Steph Curry because he's not under the age of 25. And so then we put together the, these tiers and then I assign points for each part of the tier. So a top 10 player in the NBA overall, if you're one of the top 10 best players in the NBA, you got 15 points. Only Luka Doncic of the Dallas Mavericks uh, achieves this designation. Tier 1 is the superstar player. They get 10 uh, points. Only two players under the age of 25, Jason Tatum, Zion Williamson, get that designation. Tier 1.5 is potential superstar. I only gave this to rookies. So these were guys that received a Tier 1 designation uh, from me before the draft, but we're lowering it a couple of points to 8 points. Uh, because we know they're not going to be able to contribute quite in the same way early on. Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley get that designation. Tier 2 are all-star players. They get 7 points. Trey Young, John Morant, Jalen Brown, a bunch of other players uh, getting that designation. Really, you know, we're talking here about our our top 25 uh, players in the league. 
tier 2.5 potential all-star uh, Jalen Suggs uh, gets that uh, designation, uh, as does Jonathan Kaminga, Scotty Barnes. Again, they got a Tier 2 designation before the draft. We're dropping it down a little bit uh, because of the fact that uh, we just know they're not going to be able to have the same impact right away as rookies. Uh, they get six points for being a Tier 0.25. Tier 3 is the starter. Uh, Brandon Ingram, Colin Sexton, Kevin Porter, uh, Jr., a number of other players. They get four points for that. Uh, tier 3.5 is potential starter. Uh, that, that You get three points for that. That, again, is for NBA rookies. Josh Giddy gets that number. Tier 4 is rotation player. Uh, two guy, uh, They get two points. Cam Reddish, Desmond Bain, RJ Hampton, etc. Tier 5, deep rotation player. Uh, get one point. Uh, these are guys that you know, may get some minutes, but they're not having a big impact. They're, they're the 9 to 12 guys on a roster, and they get one point. I do exclude a few players under the age of 25 on two-way contracts or just who don't have any history of making any substantial contributions to teams. And, you know, look, there's some controversy here. Uh, I actually uh, published this column in two parts, uh, teams 1 through 10 and then 11 through 20, on uh, my website, nbabigboard.com, which you can go over and check that out. That, uh, players 1 through, or teams 1 through 11 are actually free. Uh, right now, but go in, go there, uh, subscribe, uh, give us your email. Uh, we have a number of columns that are free, and then we're also covering the 2022 NBA draft as well. Uh, those columns are behind a paywall, but if you subscribe, five dollars a month, fifty dollars a year, you get access to everything. I, I really think it's worth it. I really appreciate you going over there and checking it out um, as well. I've also got some controversy about where guys are ranked. So, for example, a lot of people were frustrated. Trey Young. Tier two should be tier one. A lot of people said he's beyond an all-star now. He's a superstar. The problem was that the analytic models that I used, both Darko and LeBron, just didn't see it that way, nor did the general managers or scouts that I talked to. So, of course, somebody else can be watching this and have a different opinion on where a player should be ranked. That's part of the fun of doing a, a project like this. But at the end of the day, uh, we're going to go with that sort of model of understanding why we're ranking somebody the way that we are. Some people are also frustrated that a guy who had made an all-star team like Brandon Ingram gets a tier three designation, which is starter and not a tier two designation, uh, which is all-star. And that, again, is based off the analytics models that we were looking at, as well as talking to NBA general managers and scouts. Whereas somebody like John Collins out of Atlanta does get the tier two uh, all-star rating, even though he's not quite made an all-star team yet and so again this isn't when i say all-star or starter or deep rotation player sometimes a starter is going to get a tier four rotation player a nod sometimes a starter is going to get a tier two all-star nod sometimes an all-star is going to get a starter nod and again this is based off of what the analytics are saying about what they're doing as well as those scouts and general managers projecting forward and again all of this is projecting forward. It's not just about what a player will or won't do this season, upcoming season, but how we're projecting them over the next three to five years. All right, I think that's enough by way of introduction to get started. And so let's talk about the top three teams that had the highest total points after you've rated together and added up all of the different players they had under the age of 25. And it starts with the Atlanta Hawks. They get a total score of 29 points, uh, which was the highest of any team. It's obviously led by Trey Young, who gets a Tier 2 designation. Again, I know uh, some Hawks fans especially may feel like he should have gotten a Tier 1 designation. If you believe so, you could add three points to their score. And instead of 30, 29, they're going to get uh, 32 points. Either way, they win. Uh, and then a Tier 2 designation for John Collins, uh, who's age 24. Again, he hasn't made an all-star team, but his numbers, his statistics look like he uh, should be a young NBA all-star. And then I think the thing that makes the Hawks so dangerous is they have a ton of guys uh, that are young players under the age of 25 that get tier three or tier two desig or tier four designations. And so that's a DeAndre Hunter, a Kevin Herter, Cam Reddish, Onyeko Kongwu, Jalen Johnson, who they just drafted in the 2021 NBA draft. And then one guy that gets a tier five designation, Sharif Cooper, who they also drafted in the second round of the 2021 NBA draft. The Hawks are loaded with talent. And I think one of the interesting things about Atlanta is what they do with all this. There's actually some minutes crunch here 
as, as how are all of these players going to get minutes when you also have a, a number of veterans on the roster as well, uh, whether that's someone like Clint Capella, Bogdan Bogdanovich, or uh, someone like Danilo Gallinari as well. Uh, there are some minutes crunches here, and you wonder after a while whether the Hawks might be better served by instead of just keeping all these young players and trying to develop them, whether they cash in a number of these young guys and instead of developing them, they trade for a superstar, someone like a Bradley Beal, um, for example, I think could really help uh, the Hawks move from Eastern Conference finalist all the way to NBA championship uh, contender right now. So it'll be an interesting quandary for the Hawks and what they do, but they've done an amazing job of both stockpiling talent and putting a winner on the floor. Um, you're going to see a lot of these teams on this list. They're not doing that. And so well done for the Hawks. It's pretty amazing that you're an Eastern Conference finalist and you have the best stable of young talent under the age of 25 of any team in the league right now. Uh, that's an incredible achievement. Number two is the Boston Celtics, another playoff contender. They struggled a little bit last year, but still certainly a team that you would consider a playoff contender right now. And they are only one point behind uh, at 28 points. And they're benefited in part by getting a tier one guy, that's Jason Tatum, and having a tier two guy, Jalen Brown. And it's interesting, the Celtics won't be here next year. And they won't be here next year because Jalen Brown turns 25 just five days after the cutoff that I set October 19th, which is the first day of the NBA regular season uh, to be able to turn 25. So he'll turn 25 about five days into the season. Uh, that would drop them down about seven points. Uh, it, but that's not the only, those, those two are clearly the core, but they're not the only young players that are intriguing on this roster. Robert Williams, uh, the third, certainly a guy who I think moved up a tier into a potential tier three guy, the analytics especially like uh, Robert Williams right now. Peyton Pritchard, who was a 2020 uh, draft prospect, or, or sorry, yeah, 2020 draft prospect, ends up with a tier four designation, as does Aaron Neesmith. Uh, and Aaron Neesmith especially is interesting because I think he has tier three potential, uh, and he started to play better in the second half of the season. So he's certainly a guy as well that we'll watch uh, closely. Romeo Langford, Grant Williams, Bruno Fernando uh, get tier five uh, designations uh, for them. Then we get to, to number three, and there's a tie actually between the Keeve, Cleveland Cavaliers and the Orlando Magic. And these teams are now both clearly rebuilding. Uh, Cavs a little bit further along in that rebuild than the Orlando Magic right now, but these are more traditional teams that are stockpiling lottery picks right now. And the Cavs are ranked here in part on the strength of being able to draft Evan Mobley who we gave a tier one designation to before the draft. He gets a t tier 1.5 here, so he's worth eight points. That, that's a big boost for the Cavs, who end up with a total of 26 points uh, for them. It's not that I expect Evan Mobley to play like an NBA superstar in year one or year two for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think he'll probably be far from it. Most rookies look like tier four, tier three players in the first couple of years. And so if you're asking, hey, how can Evan Mobley be a tier 1.5, but Trey Young be a tier two, it's where we expect them to be in that three to five year range as well. And Evan Mobley has all the tools to be a tier one player down the road. I think it is going to take him several years to get there. That's normal uh, for rookies, but the talent is there and you got to credit the Cavs for landing a player like that. They also have a couple of really strong tier three guys, Darius Garland and Colin Sexton, two lottery picks that they've taken in the past in their backcourt right now. Sexton really uh, improved last year as the Darius Garland. Both of them theoretically could move into all-star tier two category. They're not really there yet. And I think the general managers that I spoke with are somewhat skeptical that they get there. I think the analytics models are as well. And so we're leaving them at tier three. Jared Allen, also big man in the middle, gets a tier three designation. And then they get Larry Markkinen, who they signed this summer, who at times looked like he was going to be a tier three guy for the Bulls regressed a little bit. He gets a tier four designation now, but you could easily see Larry Markkinen if he gets back uh, that sweet jump shot and starts playing a little bit better, moving back into a tier three. And then Isaac Okoro, who was their lottery pick last year, the sixth pick in the draft, who was pretty awful as a rookie, got lots of minutes, but was very inefficient in those minutes, better on the defensive end than he was on the offensive end. Okoro gets a tier four designation here, which frankly is probably a little bit generous um, for him. For the Orlando Magic, 
they're really starting another rebuild, but they've actually got a couple of guys that were part of their last rebuild. So this was a rebuild, then pull the plug, rebuild again. And, and so they've got a ton of players on this roster right now under the age of 25, uh, one of the highest number of just sheer number of talent there. And it starts with Jalen Suggs, who got a tier two ranking from me, who gets a tier point, tier 2.5. I think he is going to be the alpha dog on this team again. Is he an all-star in year one? No, but we're projecting out over years three through five. And actually, I think with Suggs, he's going to play closer to all-star level than most of these rookies. I just think he's one of the most NBA-ready guys um, that we're going to see. Tier three, Markel Fultz, uh, who sometimes plays like a tier five guy, sometimes plays like a tier two guy. Actually got a tier one ranking when he was drafted. Uh, injuries. Uh, that missing that jump shot have, have clearly affected his productivity. But he's only 23 years old, still getting a Tier 3 designation um, right now. Jonathan Isaac, another guy who clearly has Tier 2 talent, uh, but has really struggled with injuries throughout his career, gets a Tier 3 designation right now. And then Franz Wagner, who they drafted also with the lottery pick in 2021. RJ Hampton, who they got via trade. Uh, Wendell Carter, who they got via trade. Chumo Keke, who they got uh, in the draft a couple of years ago. Uh, Mo Bamba, uh, all getting Tier 4. Or in Bamba's case, he struggled enough that he got a Tier 5 designation. Though, again, the talent is there for him to exceed that. But now, at the age of 23, I think there starts to get some skepticism about whether he's going to be able to reach that. And one thing you can say for sure about the Magic is... They're likely to have their number go up considerably next year where they're looking at possibly being the worst team in the NBA this year, if not the worst one of the worst two or three. They're going to get a very high uh, lottery pick. It's probably going to get, again be a tier, a tier two type guy. And so you can imagine with only Mo Wagner uh, and Jonathan Isaac falling out of this team, they're going to add another lottery pick uh, to this and hopefully some of their other young players improve. Magic are going to be in contention for being the number one team in 2022. All right. So look, that's a look at the top three uh, players uh, or the top three teams that have uh, strong young cores under the age of 25. When we come back, we're going to talk about a couple of our sponsors. We come back, we'll talk about teams five through 10. But before we do so, I want to introduce you to one of our new sponsors, Indeed. General managers, coaches ask questions to find the right players in interviews like, do they have ice in their veins? Uh, are they winners? And when you're hiring, you can use Indeed ass assessments to help you make sure that you find the candidates with the skills you want. When hiring gets hard, you need Indeed, a job site that makes hiring incredibly simple. Just attract, interview, and hire. In fact, with Indeed, you can do all your hiring in one place, even interviewing. Don't just hope. Your perfect candidate will find you. Indeed's hiring tools help you cut through the noise the fast and smarter. Indeed, Instant Match provides a list of quality candidates with resumes are indeed the moment you post a sponsored job. With Indeed assessments, choose from 135 skill sets to help make sure you're finding applications from people with the skills you need. According to Talent Nest, Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Get started right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked. Get $75 credit at Indeed.com slash locked. Indeed.com slash locked. Offer valid through September 30th. Terms and conditions apply. And now... We also could not have an NBA Big Board podcast without talking about our other sponsor, Built Bar. Built Bar is delicious. There's something for everyone. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their faves. If you don't know the Built Bar flavors, well, they're missing out because they've got coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate. There is a favorite for everybody. My personal one is coconut. I think it tastes like a Mounds bar. It's delicious. It's chewy. These things taste like candy bars, but what's incredible about them is that they're also healthy. They have 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180 calories per bar, only four to five grams of sugar, and only four to five grams of net carbs. Order today at that grasshopper cookie or raspberry, whatever you like. Built Bar is the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. That's really cool. So go to BuiltBar.com, use promo code LOCKED15, 
and you'll get 15% off your first order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. And we are back, and we are talking about the future talent rankings. We're ranking teams based off of their talent under the age of 25 right now and which of those teams are set up for the future the best. We've talked about the Atlanta Hawks. We've talked about the Boston Celtics. We have talked about the Cleveland Cavaliers and Orlando Magic. Now we're looking at rankings 5 through 10. And there's a three-way tie between the Detroit Pistons, the Memphis Grizzlies, and the New Orleans Pelicans at 5 right now. They all earn 24 points uh, for their teams. And all these teams are really in different spaces right now. Memphis Grizzlies make the playoffs. Pelicans trying to make the playoffs. Pistons still heavily in a rebuild mode right now. So they're all in a little bit different spaces. All of them have a player that could be a potential superstar for them. And for the Detroit Pistons, that was obviously the number one pick in the 2021 draft. Cade Cunningham, who got a tier one designation from us, gets a tier two, 1.5 here. They also had Sadiq Bey, who was their 2020 draft pick that ended up first team all rookie uh, in 2020 for that 2020 draft class right now. He gets a tier three designation. Then they got a bunch of guys that are tier four designations right now, but some of those guys have potentials. Killian Hayes was a lottery pick last year, played more like a tier five guy, but certainly has tier four talent uh, and definitely, frankly, tier three talent for them. Hopefully they see improvement from him. Isaiah Stewart, another guy, only 20 years old, tier four guy, but could play into a tier three type of role someday. Uh, Amadou Diallo, Frank Jackson, Josh Jackson, all tier five guys as well. Luca Garza, second round pick that they got uh, this year as a tier, as a potential tier five guy. This is a rebuilding team. This is going to be another team like Orlando that we expect to have a high draft pick next year and will continue to move up the rankings. And because some of their players are so young, uh, most of them between the ages of 20 and 22 on this team, uh, they're going to be uh, in these rankings for a while. For Memphis, this is a team that made the playoffs last year, and so they're pretty bullish about the fact that they've got 24 points with a ton of young players on this roster. All of these guys, by the way, will be eligible next year for the rankings as well, and so you're going to see the Grizzlies hopefully improve by their guys jumping up tiers. And that starts with Ja Morant, who gets a Tier 2 designation, but frankly, at times played like a Tier 1 guy in the playoffs against the Utah Jazz this year. He certainly could move in to that Tier 1 category. Scouts, the advanced statistics, rate him more as a Tier 2 all-star guy. That's still impressive. Jaron Jackson Jr. has been battling injuries, gets a Tier 3 designation, but the upside for him becoming a Tier 2 player, even a Tier 1 player, uh, that's how high some NBA scouts are in them is there, but he's got to prove that he's healthy. So he gets a Tier 3 designation. Both of these players could definitely improve on that as well. And then they're loaded with a bunch of young players that are role players that are coming off the bench right now and have been really productive for them. Xavier Tillman, Desmond Bain, DeAnthony Melton uh, really come to mind. And then they drafted with the 10th pick in the draft, a, a really young player. He's only 20 years old. Zaire Williams out of Stanford right now. He gets a tier four designation here. I'm not even sure he'll be tier four. He'll likely be more like tier five. Uh, when it comes to the playing next year. But the talent is there, and he could absolutely be a guy that you're going to see come and end up being a player that ends up being a Tier 2 guy down the road. And I think that, in fact, is what these teams are hoping for right now. When you draft like a team like Memphis drafts a guy like Zara Williams, you're not drafting him hoping about what he can be in year one, but what he can be in year three, four, and five. And if he can get up to tier three, uh, tier two category, then Memphis has the chance to be a really serious NBA championship contender. And then finally, the New Orleans Pelicans, uh, they sit there at 24 points as well. They have a tier one guy in Zion Williamson, a guy who hasn't quite got to tier one status yet, but the way that he's played, the defensive end is the part that he needs to improve on, but the way that he's played has made teams confident in that three to five year range. He is going to be a tier one player, could be a tier one as early as next season. Brandon Ingram, a little, little bit controversial, gets a tier three designation, even though he has made an all-star team. And so there is a there is the argument that he should have a tier two designation instead of tier three. Um, if he did, you would add four points. Then and the New Orleans Pelicans are 28. They're tied for second with the Boston Celtics. The advanced analytics don't agree. The NBA general managers and scouts that I talked to were 
split on this, but most of them agreed he was more tier three. A really good starter on a team, but not likely to be a perennial all-star, um, which would get you the tier two uh, designation. The other guys are all sort of tier four guys on the Pelicans. One guy that I'm actually maybe a little bit more bullish on than the analytics are and then the scouts were, um, were Nikhil Alexander-Walker, a guy who played really strongly at the end of the season for the New Orleans Pelicans. I think he could easily be a tier three guy. Uh, and I, I wouldn't even be surprised if he's tier three this year. I thought maybe tier four was a little bit low. I think there is some confusion about how you're, he's going to be used for the Pelicans this year. Also, Trey Murphy the uh, third, their draft pick in the 2021 draft looked really good in the summer league. Is your classic three and D stretch guy. Uh, he's at a tier four ranking right now, but he could end up being tier three. Kira Lewis, who was their 2020 NBA lottery pick last year, it's a tier four designation, but could could end, end up being a tier three guy as well. So still a lot of talent uh, there uh, for the Pelicans. They will lose Brandon Ingram, who's 24 years old in next year's uh, rankings. But I, I don't think the, the Pelicans are making the playoffs this year. So they're going to get another lottery pick as well. And so maybe they're going to be able to balance um, that out uh, in uh, New Orleans. So those five, those three teams are tied at five. So now we're going to jump down and look at two teams that are tied at eight. That's the Oklahoma City Thunder, who had 21 points. Minnesota Timberwolves also tied at 21 points. Thunder do it by sheer numbers. They have a whopping 11 players on their roster under the age of 25. That's crazy. They only have one guy who's really at that star level, and that's Shea Gilgis Alexander, who gets the Tier 2 designation, only 23 years old. Had an incredible season before getting injured for the Thunder last year. Certainly a guy who is going to be all-star worthy uh, down the road as, as a point guard. Josh Giddy gets a Tier 3.5 designation. A little bit surprised that they didn't take Jonathan Kaminga at 6. They take Giddy uh, instead. He thrives with the ball in his hands, but so does Shea. It'll be interesting to see how they balance that out. He he really did play pretty well in Australia in the Pro League last year. He gets a Tier 3.5 designation. And then you got a ton of Tier 5 guys uh, for the Thunder. These are young players, but whether they're going to amount to anything in the NBA is questionable. The two guys off the roster that I am going to consider as maybe being able to amount to more than they're ranked right now um, is Lugens Dort, uh, who is a tier four guy, but you know, frankly, probably played closer to tier three. They're, the skepticism on Dort is he's doing it on a really, really bad basketball team. The analytics sort of hold that against him. Scouts sort of held it against him as well. Would he be able to play the same way if he was on a better uh, quality team? He gets the tier four designation, but certainly you can make the argument for tier three for him. And then Poku, Man, I don't know what to say about Poku. Sometimes he looked like there's not a tier six, but he looked like a tier six player. Sometimes he looked like some nights a tier two player, like an all-star. Only 19 years old. Not sure what he's going to be. He gets a tier four ranking, which frankly is generous, given that he was ranked uh, by LeBron as the second worst player in the NBA last year, statistically. So uh, it's a little bit generous. You're hoping that he adds some strength and continues to improve. And again, those flashes are really impressive as well. But the Thunder are really going to build on this ranking by having a ton of future draft picks and continuing to draft young players and, and likely having one of the worst records in the NBA this year and drafting hopefully a Tier 2, um, at worst Tier 3 player to add to this roster in the future. So Thunder are going to go up. They're still heavily in the rebuild right now. Uh, but you can see from what they've done so far in the rebuild, uh, they're a little bit behind some of the other teams just because they haven't been able to land that, that Tier 2 tier two uh, or tier one talent quite yet. Minnesota Timberwolves are there uh, tied at 21. And frankly, this is an impressive feat for the Timberwolves considering that they don't have Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell in these rankings because they're both 25 years old. So they did not count for the rankings. Um, if they did, you know, they would be right up there at the very top um, of the rankings. So you've got Anthony Edwards who really came on the second half of the season Received a Tier 2 designation before the draft. He's still there at a Tier 2 now. Again, I don't think Anthony Edwards is making an all-star team next year, but in years 3 through 5, I think you could certainly see him uh, making that right now. Lethal score. Let's see what else um, he's able to add to his game. Jaden McDaniels gets a Tier 4 designation, but certainly could end up playing into a Tier uh, a tier 3. Leandro Bomaro, 
a guy that they drafted in the 2020 uh, draft first round, comes in with a tier four designation. But again, I could see him playing into a tier three down the road as well. Really high on him, um, thought he played really well um, in Spain. And Malik Beasley is the other guy, gets a tier three designation as a starter. Excellent scorer, can really shoot the basketball uh, as well. The The Wolves are are really set. They have a really interesting collection of young talent. And if they play anything like they played really towards the end of last season, they could make a run at the playoffs. Of course, it's been reported that they're heavily after Ben Simmons right now. I think the problem for Minnesota is they don't want to move Anthony Edwards. They don't want to move Carl Anthony Towns. And so can a package of D'Angelo Russell, Jaden McDaniels, Bomaro, Malik Beasley, can something like that entice the 76ers? I'd say right now the answer is no. They're looking for more than that from Ben Simmons. But let's see if they get desperate. Uh, if they can't get a better offer and go for that uh, down down the road. Um, so that's the Minnesota Timberwolves. And then at 10, it's the Houston Rockets who are heavily in a rebuild um, right now. The, the Rockets are just in the start of that. And so in the start of that, that they only actually have six players under the age of 25 right now. They were built around John Wall, James Harden, Eric Gordon. This team was supposed to be competing for a championship. When, uh, when Harden decides that he wants to bolt, it really breaks up everything in Houston right now. And so they really didn't start that rebuild process until after the 2020 season or 2020-21 season had started. They get a high draft pick. Their number one guy is Jalen Green, who gets a 1.5 designation from me. Certainly a guy who I think is going to compete for Rookie of the Year, probably the favorite in my eye. Uh, to be Rookie of the Year this year, and a guy who I think could average 20 points a game, game, Kevin Porter Jr., gets a Tier 3 designation, really came on in the second half of the season, definitely has Tier 3 talent. I think teams are skeptical to give that to him yet, uh, given the challenges that he's had off the court in the past and whether he's going to mature to the point that he's going to play into all-star level, but he's going to get the ball Looks like John Wall is not going to be uh, in this rotation this year. They're going to try him at point guard. If he thrives there at point guard, Kevin Porter Jr., at only 21 years old, uh, certainly has a Tier 2 potential. Alperin and Singen gets a Tier 3.5 designation. I was really impressed with him in the Summer League. He was the MVP at the Turkish League. Not for young players, just overall MVP uh, of the Turkish League last year. He gets a Tier 3.5 designation. Could end up as a Tier uh, 2 player. Usman Garuba, Josh Christopher, Kenyon Martin Jr., the other young players uh, that we're looking at. Some people have said, hey, where's Deshaun Tate on this? He's actually already 25 years old. And so uh, he was an old rookie, and he doesn't make the cut here. All right. That is 10. Uh, that is picks 5 through 10. Those are the teams that are ranked 5 through 10, having the young best core under the age of 25. When we come back, we'll look at the future rankings for teams 11 through 20, uh, including five teams that just missed the mark by one point. We got a big tie uh, as we go uh, at number 11. But before we do so, I want to talk about another one of our longtime sponsors, Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand that warehouses happen to carry? You have computers with access to Rock Auto at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. They have everything you can need, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on. And they had to hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Okay, we're back. I'm Chad Ford with Chad Ford's NBA Big Board. We are looking at future talent rankings which teams have the best core of young talent under the age of 25? We've done teams 1 through 10. We're looking at teams 11 through 20 right now. And you can read along over at nbabigboard.com right now. I wrote up this column. You can see all the players. You can see how they ranked and how they were added up. Those are uh, picks 1 through 11 are free uh, for anybody. Uh, picks 12 through 20 
uh, will require you to be a subscriber, but you can subscribe for $5 a month or $50 a year. We'll also be covering the 2022 NBA draft. There's a ton of stuff on there right now. Uh, we'll be going all year. It's definitely worth a subscription. Would really appreciate you going over there and checking out. And if nothing else, giving us your email. Where we can email a uh, podcast and other articles that I'm writing into your inbox every morning when they're written. Okay, we're now at 11. There's a tie with the Charlotte Hornets, the Chicago Bulls, the Dallas Mavericks, the New York Knicks, and the Sacramento Kings right now. I think Hornets fans were probably the most upset that their team did not make the top 10 because everybody is talking about this team as a top 10 type prospect uh, right now as far as one of the best young up-and-coming teams in the league. They just didn't quite get there. One point below that, LaMelo Ball gets a Tier 2 designation. That's how we had him ranked before the draft. And despite him winning Rookie of the Year and looking really talented, I think both the analytics and the general managers and scouts that I talked to were a little bit reluctant to say LaMelo Ball is going to be a Tier 1 superstar type player. Uh, certainly getting a Tier 2 designation is not an insult by any stretch of the imagination. He's not yet made an all-star team, but that's where we see him going uh, in the next three to five years. Does he have Tier 1 talent? Yeah, I think you can, he can get there. I just think teams are still betting it's more likely Tier 2 um, than Tier 1. And you see how hard it is when really you have Jason Tatum and Zion Williamson and Luka Doncic as the only Tier 1 guys under the age of 25 uh, why teams might be a little bit skeptical about that there. They also get a Tier 3 designation from P.J. Washington, Tier 4 designations from James Booknight, who was their lottery pick this year in the draft, Miles Bridges, who you could argue has played himself into a Tier 3. He's sort of right there on the bubble between Tier 4, Tier 3 at 23 years old. J.T. Thor, a Tier 5 guy. Vernon Carey Jr., a Tier 5 guy. Jalen McDaniels, a Tier 5 guy. For the Chicago Bulls, uh, their main guy, they don't have a Tier 2 or a Tier 1 guy, so it starts with Patrick Williams, who gets a Tier 3. I, this is interesting. I wondered whether Patrick Williams could deserve a Tier 2 designation. Uh, he's only 20 years old. I thought he had an impressive rookie season. He probably played more like a Tier 4 player than a Tier 3 player, even though he was a starter. It was interesting to see scouts still seeing him maxing out as more of a Tier 3 guy than a Tier 4 guy. And some of the rationale was just that the Bulls are going for it. Uh, they've got a lot of veteran talent on this team right now, uh, whether that's Zach Levine um, or Nikola Vucevic or DeMar DeRozan on this roster. And because of that, is he going to really get the opportunity to shine in the way that pushes him into all-star range over the next three to five years? I think there was some skepticism there about that. Kobe White gets a Tier 3 designation as well. Alonzo Ball, who I think was their big pickup, gets a Tier 3 designation and definitely a guy who has flirted with Tier 2 designation in the past, sort of right on the bubble there um, as well. And so certainly, if you're more bullish on Ball and Patrick Williams, you could bump up the Bulls score um, a little bit as well. But that's, that's the Bulls' young core right now. I, I think it's a pretty good young core. I'm still skeptical the Bulls make the playoffs this year. Um, partly because I just think the Eastern Conference is so loaded. Uh, but if you want to make an argument that they still have a bright future, lots of young players on that roster that are really intriguing. Dallas gets it done by virtue of having Luka Doncic, who gets 15 points. They earn a total of 19 points for Dallas. Luka Doncic gets 15 of those. Why does the, t the top 10 designation get 15 points and a Tier 1 Superstar designation only, only 10? And this was at really the insistence of several general managers that I spoke to that said, look, getting a top 10 player in the NBA is so rare. It's so transformative uh, for a team uh, that it's just worth that much more points, even though you may look at it and say, look, I don't think the difference between Luka Doncic and Jason Tatum is that big. I, I would ask you to reconsider. Luka Doncic is only 22 years old, and he's already performing at a top 10 level in the NBA. He certainly has room to continue to improve. I think there, it's within the realm of possibility that Luka Doncic ends up as a top five player in the NBA and an MVP contender down the road. I'm not sure anybody else that we're talking about other than maybe Jason Tatum or Zion Williams uh, gets there. And so because of that, that is the, the, the question about why he gets five points more than other guys do. And then the other guys are tier five guys, Tyrell Terry, Moses Brown, um, uh, Tilakina. Those are the guys that are really very 
fringe rotation players for the Dallas Mavericks. At uh, 11, New York Knicks are there as well. And uh, some Knicks fans were upset that they weren't higher, even though, again, this is a team that's blending veterans with their young players. R.J. Barrett gets the highest ranking at Tier 3. Mitch Robinson also gets that Tier 3 ranking as well. Some people really pushed for R.J. Barrett to have that Tier 2 ranking. Just didn't hear it from the scouts and GMs that I spoke with. And the analytics were very much against that. With R.J. Barrett ranking, I think, as the 306th best player in the league last year from a LeBron, LeBron they were not nearly as impressed as I was over what he was doing and his improvement for the Knicks next year. Uh, Mitch Robinson also grades out as Tier 3. And Emmanuel quickly, and this is a great example of a guy that would have probably received a Tier 5 designation last year, um, plays really well, ultimately ends up getting a Tier 3 designation this year. Uh, Quentin Grimes, uh, who was one of their uh, first-round picks this year, gets a Tier 4 designation, as does Miles McBride, who gets a Tier 4 designation. Uh, despite being a second-round pick, if you saw him in the summer league, uh, he was really good, and I thought he should have been a first-round pick uh, this year as well. So Knicks have a really nice young core. Uh, Obi Toppin, we should also talk about, gets a Tier 4 designation. You can make an argument for Toppin as a Tier 3 player as well. Uh, given the role that he's playing on the Knicks, it seems more likely. Tier 4 is where he's going to go and what we've seen from him so far. And then finally, the Sacramento Kings, which, you know, frankly, should be much higher in these rankings because they've been like in the lottery perpetually for like the last 15 years. And some of it is they've made some good choices like De'Aaron Fox. I really like the Davian Mitchell pick. Tyrese Halliburton, I thought was a home run for them uh, in the lottery. They've made some really good choices. They've made some pretty poor choices too, choosing Marvin Bagley over Luka Doncic in 2018, uh, passing on Donovan Mitchell and Bam Adebayo in, in 2017, uh, drafting Georgius Papaginius in the 2016 lottery. Um, these were all pretty tragic mistakes for the Kings that ended up lowering uh, their score as well. De'Aaron Fox gets a Tier 3 designation. Tyrese Halliburton gets a Tier 3 designation. Davian Mitchell gets a Tier 3.5 designation. You could make the argument again that Fox should end up as a Tier 2 guy. He's sort of flirting on the verge of that right now. Davian Mitchell, I, I think Tier, tier 3.5, pretty generous for him. Starter um, as a rookie, Tyrese Halliburton. I'm not sure we see Tyrese Halliburton in an All-Star game. I think he's just going to be a really high-level starter. I'm very high on Tyrese Halliburton, just not sure... His ceiling is all-star, and then a bunch of Tier 5 guys uh, for the Sacramento Kings. One question about Marvin Bagley III, who ends up with the Tier 4 designation right now. Analytics just didn't see him as putting up starter numbers. Scouts and GMs not really liking him very much. Sacramento Kings tried to move him this summer, had a hard time getting back a lot of value in return. That's why he ends up with Tier 4, despite the fact that he starts for the Sacramento Kings. At 16, it's the Phoenix Suns. They do it off the strength of two young players, Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, both who get Tier 2 designations. DeAndre Ayton has not made an all-star team yet, but certainly looks like he's going to be that part in the next three to five years for Phoenix. And then Jalen Smith and Landry Shamet getting a Tier 4 and Tier 5 designations um, as well. Denver Nugget ends up with a tie at 17, along with the, Houston, uh, along with the Toronto Raptors. They each get 17 points. Nuggets do it on the backs of Jamal Murray, who gets a Tier 2 designation. Michael Porter Jr., who gets a Tier 3 designation. And frankly, if you look at some of the analytics and some of the uh, general managers, there was a real spit, split whether Michael Porter Jr. ultimately is going to be a Tier 2 level all-star right now. I think some of the concern of why he stays at Tier 3 is just those ongoing questions about his back and will, will his back stay healthy. Zeke Naji, Bones Highland, P.J. Dozier, uh, Bull Bull, all other young players under the age of 25 for the Denver Nuggets that get fit into this tier with lower rankings. Raptors do it on the strength of Scotty Barnes. Their uh, lottery pick in the 2021 NBA draft gets a tier 2.5 designation. Again, Barnes is a guy that's probably going to be a little further away. Uh, and it's going to take him a couple of years to be able to get up to the point that he looks like an all-star. But this is one of the most talented young players that I've seen can play all five positions on the floor. I'm actually pretty confident by year four or five, Scotty Barnes is an all-star um, in the league, earns that Tier 2 designation. Uh, Malachi Flint gets a Tier 4 designation. OG gets the Tier 3 designation. He's 24 years old still. And actually, some teams think this could be the year 
um, given his level of improvement, that he could reach tier two uh, status or all-star status. Again, scouts a little bit more skeptical about him, uh, put him in, in the tier three. Uh, Grant, Gary Trent Jr. gets tier four designation. Precious Ochoa gets tier five designation. Maybe there's a little bit more talent there uh, that he can move up to tier four. And then at 19, a uh, tie between the Golden State Warriors and San Antonio Spurs, two teams in really, really different situations. Golden State Warriors going for a championship right now, but does have a really intriguing young core of Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, James Wiseman, Jordan Poole. Uh, Kaminga gets the highest ranking, actually, of the Warriors with a tier 2.5 designation. Again, not expecting Jonathan Kaminga to make an all-star team in the next couple of years. He's going to come off the bench. I'm not even sure he's going to play much of a role at all. He might be a tier five player uh, next year uh, for the Golden State Warriors. But given the upside and where he's at and what teams saw in the summer league, I think they're pretty confident that by year four or five, we're going to see Jonathan Kaminga um, as a potential all-star. Moses Moody gets that tier 3.5 designation as a starter. James Wiseman, who was ranked as tier two coming out of the draft, drops down to tier three designation. Again, I'm not sure he's going to be a great starter for the Warriors next year, but that's where they see his long-term potential. And let's not count out Jordan Poole either, who I think is a really talented guy, gets a tier four designation, certainly at some point, especially when it's time for Clay Thompson and for Steph Curry to hang it up, could end up with that tier um, three designation. San Antonio, it's going to be rocky Spurs fans. I, I think this is a team that has some young talent. They've lost most of their veteran core. They don't have any superstars here. They don't have any tier two or tier one guys right now. Devin Vassell is the guy that I'm personally highest on of these young players. Um, he's a tier four designation here, which I was a little bit surprised. Uh, I, again, I, I'm a little bit more bullish. I think he probably should have had a tier three designation. I think he has tier two potential. Keldon Johnson gets a tier three designation. Lonnie Walker the third gets a tier three designation uh, for them. Joshua Primo, uh, another guy. Tier five seemed a little bit harsh. He's only 18 years old. Uh, he's going to be in this ranking for a really, really long time and certainly seems like he could achieve higher than that. A lot of general managers were shocked that he was taken in the lottery, thought he was much more of a late first round or early second round pick, which is why you're seeing some of the tier five designations sort of happening here. Uh, and uh, we'll just see. The Spurs have been right more than me in the past when I've disagreed with them. Maybe they're right here, and Joshua Primo's a Tier 3 or Tier 2 guy. Uh, it's certainly within the realm of possibility. Zach Collins, another guy that was just sort of tough to gauge because injuries, he, he clearly has Tier 3 talent, um, but injuries have really slowed him down. He gets the Tier 5 designation here. The Spurs should dramatically improve on their score next year, because I think they're going to be a fairly high lottery team next year. I think they're going to be somewhere between the 5th and 7th worst team in the NBA uh, next year, and that should get them a Tier 2 or Tier 3 uh, player in the upcoming 2022 NBA draft. All right, well, that's the look at the future talent rankings, the teams uh, that have the best young cores under the age of 25. When we come back next week, we are going to talk about the top 25 under 25. This time it's going to be a player ranking, 1 through 25, who are the best players under the age of 25, using the same sort of methodology that we did before, uh, but we're going to now put them in rank order and see who are the best young and up-and-coming players over the next three to five years in the NBA. You can check all of that out at nbabigboard.com, where we'll release that column on Tuesday of next week, and we'll follow up with a podcast next Friday as well. You've been listening to Chad Ford's NBA Big Board on the Locked On Podcast Network. Aloha.